Welcome to Peak Worship. I'm so glad you could join us by Facebook and YouTube. So good to have you in the service. And my, we're in for a good time tonight in the Lord's house. Thank you so much for being here. Let's join in and sing together. Let's all stand and let's sing this old song together. Glory to his name. I'm glad we can praise the Lord together. Glory to his name. Let's join in and sing. Hallelujah. Thank God there's glory to his name. I'm glad we can adore and worship the Lord Jesus Christ. He is worthy of our praise, isn't he? I'm so thankful he is. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the wonderful privilege to come before you. And thank you, Lord, for the wonderful time we have to come and praise your wonderful name. Lord, I know there's a whole lot of trouble in our world, but Lord, I'm glad that we can put all that aside for a few moments and just worship you and adore you for being so good to us. We have so much to praise you for. And Lord, in the midst of troublesome times, you are still God and you are still worthy of our praise. And Lord, I'm glad we can look up to you and know that you're still in control. In the midst of troubles, in the midst of trials, in the midst of turbulent, tri turbulent tri tribulations, Relations and turbulent times in our troublesome society. Lord, I'm glad you are still Savior of the world. And Lord, if we'll just trust you and put our faith and hope in you, Lord, I'm glad you can speak sweet peace to our troubles. Lord, I pray for that one that's watching tonight, that one that's troubled, that one, the Lord, that needs your touch so bad in their lives. Lord, that one that needs healing, that one that needs a, a touch from you, Lord, to speak sweet peace to them. Lord, I pray that this will be the moment, this will be the time in their life that they would sit Sense your presence, they would sense your power, they would know you're still in control. Lord, you know those that are experiencing financial difficulties now. I pray, Lord, they'd call upon you and they would watch you working mightily in their needs, Lord, even now. I'm glad you're able to do that. You're able to meet needs. You're able to come to the rescue. Lord, I pray that you do it now and you show yourself mighty in, in times of need, Lord, you have throughout your word, throughout our lives, and throughout the lives of many, many of your servants, many, many of your people, many, many of your children. You've come to their rescue over the, over the portals of time, Lord, you've come and you've, uh, you've, you've showed yourself mighty. And we pray, Lord, you do that again today. In Jesus' wonderful name, help us now as we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're in for a good time tonight in the Lord's house, and I'm thankful you've tuned in and thankful you're here. 
uh, by medium of Facebook and YouTube and joining in with us. Amen. We're going to have a good song, and then we're going to look right into the Word of God. You know, God's blessed us in so many ways, and I thank God for his many, many blessings. Amen. I got to look it into the Word of God and study and thinking about so many things I could talk about and preach about. The Lord has filled his Word with so, so many things to talk about and preach about. We hear so many troublesome things going on in our world. I got thinking about heaven. So I'm preaching on heaven tonight, the home of the saved, heaven. I got thinking about that. I had a request uh, uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, they said, boy, we enjoy your boys singing. When they were here, it's just come from our home. We were standing around talking. We were all together one one day, and uh, uh, my wife uh, grabbed the phone and said, y'all sing one. And so the boys sung. Uh, you probably may have heard this one before. This is their own arrangement to, uh, of uh uh, when we all get to heaven, one of our favorite songs, you enjoy. And then we'll look into the Word of God. Have your Bibles, uh, if you have them, uh, if you hadn't, get them. And we'll open our Bibles to the book of Second Corinthians. We'll look at heaven together. All right? Amen. Come on, boys, and sing one for us. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout and shout the victory. While we walk the pilgrim path, way clouds will overspread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shout, not a sigh. When we all, when we all get to heaven, what a day! What a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all, when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us soon is beauty. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. When we all, when we all get to heaven, what a day, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we, all, when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout, sing and shout, sing and shout, sing and shout, and shout the victory. All right, thank the Lord for that good song. Let's look into the Word of God now in the book of 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 and verse number 1. I want to preach on heaven tonight, heaven, the home of the saved. I want to use this first verse in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. The Bible says, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. I want to leave off reading. I could read this whole chapter, boy. It's just so good. It's where Paul talks about heaven. And he talks about to be absent from the bodies, to be present with the Lord. I've used this verse so many times to try to comfort uh, loved ones and friends who's a loved one who's a family member or someone who's slipped off to heaven, I'm telling you. And I'm grateful and thankful that these are comforting words. These are treasures from the word of God. These are precious promises that we have in the midst of troublesome days. I'm telling you to remind us of heaven. I think about that old song, How Beautiful Heaven Must Be. I love that old song. I listen to old brother Billy Kelly sing that song often. How beautiful heaven must be. Sweet home of the happy and free. I'm telling you it's going, the place I'm going to call home one of these days. I'm telling you, heaven, that beautiful place. I'm telling you, you know, this world is full of beautiful places. I've been to a 
lot of beautiful places in this world, uh, but uh, nothing's going to be compared to that wonderful place that God is preparing for you and I that know him as personal Savior. And I want to take a peek in this book, uh, the wonderful book that God has left us, his Bible, and uh, see what the Bible has to say about heaven, the home of the saved. I want to see, first of all, the people that the Bible talks is going to be there. You know, there's a lot of people that talk a lot about heaven, but uh, there's not everybody that's talking about it. It's going there. You know, as a matter of fact, the Bible talks about that very fact. Jesus talked about that in the, in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 7. He talked about that very fact. He talked about building on the solid rock. And he talked about a no-so salvation. He said, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, we have prophesied in thy name. Boy, I'm telling you, that sounds like a bunch of preachers, don't it? Uh, have prophesied in thy name and in thy name have watch this cast out devils boy i'm telling you they had some power and in thy name done many marvelous or many wonderful excuse me many wonderful works and then will i profess unto them i never knew you depart from me ye that work iniquity now jesus said those words and he's talking about the people that are going to be in heaven one of these days somebody said preacher is the baptist going to heaven well i will tell you i've met a bunch of them i, I wonder if they're going to be there methodist going to heaven i don't know i've met some of them i wonder if they're going to be in heaven the holiness church of god i, I want to tell you if you work if you're depending on some uh denomination to get you to heaven by joining some denomination some church to get you there it won't ever happen my friend you see only the redeemed only those who have been changed by the power of God. Now, I'm Baptist, and I'll stay Baptist as long as they stay with this book. I'm talking about the Word of God, the holy and our errant inspired Word of God. I'm a King James Bible man myself, and I will stick with the Bible. I'm going to stick with the true and errant inspired Word of God. And when the Baptists leave that book, I won't be Baptist anymore, I won't tell you. But I, I believe the Baptists have stuck to the book, and I'm going to stick to the book. Hallelujah. Praise God. And because it's going to stand when the world's on fire, you see. It's going to stand. God's Word is going to stand forever. Well, I, I believe there's going to be some Baptists that ain't going to be there. I've met some of them <laughs> that claimed, you know, they, they were Baptists. They were putting their hope in the Baptists. But I won't tell you. Uh, the Bible talks about it. You better know the, the, the writer of this book. You better know uh, what the Bible says about being redeemed. You, you know there's a religious man that come to Jesus one time and when Jesus was on this earth and he talked to him and he he, uh, he was wrapped up in religion. You know I meet a lot of people in our society that's wrapped up in religion but I wonder if they even know the, the person uh, that, uh, that, 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 that the Christ of religion. I wonder if they even know him personally. The Bible talks about it in John chapter number 3. There's a man that came to Jesus by night. The man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. And the Bible says the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a, a, a teacher come from God. No man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Now listen to this. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time to his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water... And of the Spirit, capital S, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, our Church of Christ friends have tried to take that and say you have to be baptized to be, be saved. But I, uh, that's not what the, the Jesus is saying there. That which is born to the flesh, that's where he's talking about water. Flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit, capital S, is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. You see, there's got to be a spiritual change take place in your life. That's there's got to be a time and a place when you realize that you're lost and you cannot save yourself and you by faith believe what the Bible says about Jesus coming into this world and taking your place on Calvary's hill and dying in your stead and, 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 and taking the, your price for the sin and, and taking your place for all your sin and you by faith trust the Savior as your only hope of heaven and as a marvelous transaction, marvelous transaction takes place there when you do that by 
faith. I did it as a boy. In my life, I realized I was a sinner. I realized I could not save myself. I realized there was nothing I could do in this life. There was no good in me that could merit me to heaven. There was no good in me that I could do. There was no joining no church. There was no being baptized. There was nothing, no works within me that I could do that would somehow get me to heaven. I realized I had to put all my faith and put my trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did for me on Calvary. And by doing that, I put all my faith and trust in him. I said, Lord, I'm helpless. I'm hopeless without you. Will you save me? Will you forgive me of all my sin? You know what happened? He did. He forgave me of all my sin. That didn't make me perfect, but that made me one of his children. And I've never been the same since. Hallelujah. And I'll never be the same since. That's the people that's going to be in heaven. I want to tell you, it won't be somebody with some name on some church road that's going to get you there. It'll be those who have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as their only hope of heaven. Those who've been redeemed, the people of heaven. But then I want you to see the purity of heaven. The purity that's going to be there. You know, nothing that defiles and nothing that, uh, that's decayed, nothing that defiles or decayed, nothing that's impure will ever Go into heaven. Aren't you glad of that? I'm telling you, hallelujah. No sin will ever be there. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 21, verse 27, and there shall in no wise enter into, in, in, in it, in, enter into it anything that defileth, neither what whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, there's nothing that defiles, nothing that's abomination, nothing that maketh a lie that's ever going to enter into heaven. No drugs, no cursing, no adultery, no lying, no sexual sin, no nothing, boy, no drug. I'm talking about nothing that's going to grab hold and defile people that doesn't heal up on this earth is ever going to be there. Hallelujah. I'm glad that's true, aren't you? I'm glad for the marvelous, marvelous truth of God's word that talks about the things that are not going to be in heaven. Oh, I'm telling you, it's a marvelous truth. Uh, those things that are not going to be there, hallelujah. Uh, God's going to wipe away all tears. There's going to be no death, nor sorrow, and the death, the crying, neither shall be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Hallelujah. That's not going to be there in that wonderful place, the purity that's going to be there. And then I want to think about the preparation being made over there. You remember what Jesus said right before he left here, right before he went to the cross? He's meeting with his disciples. He's trying to explain to them the plan of salvation. He's trying to explain to them that there's only one way they're going to get there. And that's through him. And in that uh, conversation that he had with them in that upper room, John chapter 14, verse number one, he said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And then he said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. And then a few days Days later, after he had risen from the dead, hallelujah, the Bible said in Acts chapter 1, verse number 10, and while they looked steadfastly, those disciples, and, and the, they are all gathered around there with him, and they're watching him. The Bible said, while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, he started going up. As he's giving them his promise, as he's, his, as he's blessing them and talking to them, he starts rising up. Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner. He went up in the clouds. He's coming back in the clouds. As you've seen him go into heaven. I said all that to say this. You remember what he told them? He said, and if I go and prepare a place for you, he's gone to prepare a place for us. Those of us who trusted him as personal Savior. Now you stop and think about that. It's been over 2,000 years since he went away. Imagine the preparation that he's made for you and I. It's being made for you and I. Just think how lovely it must be after all these years. I mean the preparation that God has made for his children. In that wonderful place called heaven. Boy, it makes me want to shout, don't you? Hallelujah. The preparation being made over there. The purity that will always be there. But then I want you to think about the praise. Boy, I love to praise God, don't you? And boy, he inhabits the praise of his people. When he comes on the scene, 
when you start praising him, it's amazing what happens. I mean, all these troubles, all these trials, all these other things just seem to vanish away when he comes on the scene. And that's the way heaven's going to be. You, you know, uh, John caught a glimpse of that in that vision he had in Revelation chapter number 5. The Bible talks about it. And he said when he was taken out, he'd take the book and the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them their harps and the golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And the Bible says, and they sung a new song saying thou art worthy to, to, to take the book and open the seals thereof and for thou wast slain and hath redeemed us by God by thy blood out of every kindred and every tongue and every nation and every people and every nation he's the redeemer he's the one that's worthy of our praise look at this verse 10 and hath made us uh, unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth and I beheld, John said, and, beh and I heard a voice of many, of many angels round about the throne and the beast and the elders. And the number of them was what? 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. He said, there's so many people I can't even count them. <laughs> Woo! And watch this saying with a loud voice, worthy is the Lamb. That's him. That's Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Can I tell you, he's worthy. We're going to join that song one of these days. But I will tell you, he's worthy of us praising him today. We ought to just lift our hands right now wherever you are and say, Praise be unto God. Praise be unto you, Jesus. You're worthy of our praise. He is. There's preparation being over, made over there, but there's going to be praise that's going to be heard over there. I'm telling you, there's going to be praise like we've never heard it before. Now, I've been to these, uh, I've been to these meetings. I got to go to a pastor's conference several years ago. There's over 10,000 people in that, in that, uh, in that, uh, in that church. Standing wall to wall, boy, and boy, they got to praising God. And I thought about, boy, how wonderful it's going to be when we all get to heaven. Hallelujah, when you get that many people praising God, but I will tell you, when you get God in your presence like he is right now in my presence, hallelujah, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. It'd just be me and him in the car sometimes, and I get to praising him. It'd just be me and him in this church like it is right now. Nobody else, but boy, when I get to praising him, hallelujah, Woo! he's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our praise. Ah, me. Oh, it's sad to hear his name disgraced in our society today. It's sad to meet people today that don't know him, that don't respect him, and don't have a clue who he is. But I will tell you, he's worthy to be praised. And I think about the perfection that's going to be ours over there. I live in a sin-cursed world. I dwell around people that are <laughs> living sin-cursed. Uh, I live in a sin-cursed body. I mean, I, I'm, I'm around the sin cursed every day of my life, and you are too. But I'm going one of these days where the sin curse will be no more. <laughs> Woo, glory, hallelujah. Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 20 says, For our conversation, literally that means our citizenship, that means, uh, that means where I'm already established at. <laughs> our conversation is in heaven. That's the place I'm going one of these days. Could be today. From whence also we look for the Savior. He's coming. The Lord Jesus Christ. What's going to happen when he comes, preacher? Let me tell you. Paul said it right here. Who shall change our vile bodies that it might be fashioned and may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the working whereby he, he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. He's going to change it one of these days. He's going to change our vile When he comes again, Woo, it's going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. I'm going to be changed. Amen. Hallelujah. John said it this way, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Woo-wee. I don't know what all that entails. My little mind can't fathom all of what that entails. I try to imagine it. But I know it's going to be wonderful. Oh, it's going to be wonderful. Hallelujah. We sang that old song in the choir. Ah, it's going to be wonderful in the by and by. It's going to be wonderful in heaven on high. I'm telling you. 
Last of all, I see the person responsible for us being there. Who is that person, preacher? It's Jesus. He's the one that's responsible. He's the one that's worthy of our praise. He's the one. The Bible said it this way in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Oh, have you been saved from your sin? Have you? Have you ever trusted him as your personal savior? Has there ever been a moment in time in your life when you can honestly say that you've come face to face with your sin knowing that you need a savior and by faith you've trusted the Lord as your only hope of heaven? If not, why don't you do that right now? Why don't you just put everything else aside? Say, I, 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 I admit it, preacher. I need to be saved. I've put it off too long. You see, the Lord is coming. The world events around us show us the world. And uh, the world shaping up shows us that the Lord is coming. I don't know when he's coming. I, I really don't. I, I'd be foolish to even try to attempt to say when he's coming. But I know this. I know he's coming. I'm glad I'm ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm glad he saved me. He's the one responsible. He's the one. He's the one I praise for it. Oh, you see, he came to me even before I knew him. And he opened my heart to that truth that I need his Savior. And by faith, he gave me that faith to trust him. Had ability to trust him. He's doing it to you now. He'll, he'll help you if you'll just trust him. He'll give you that faith and assurance to trust him. If you'll only do it. Years ago, uh, when China was open to the gospel, uh, there's a there's a there's a missionary that went to China, a missionary doctor, and she told an old woman who came to her for some medical treatment, and then he had a church service after he'd treat them. He'd ask them to stay, and he'd have a church service, and she listened intently to the simple message of Jesus and his love of how he came, how he lived a perfect life, and how he died on a cross and gave his perfect life for her sin-cursed life for all of the whole world. She opened her heart to the gospel and she trusted the Lord as her personal Savior. And leaving that meeting, she trudged miles back on the dusty road back to her home. And she, she went on back to her house. And days later, she showed up to this uh, doctor's little camp there again. And the mission station. And she said to the doctor, he saved me. He's changed my life. <laughs> but I can't remember his name. Would you tell me his name again? I can't remember his name. He's changed me. He saved me. But I can't remember his name. Will you tell me his name again? That story touched the heart of George Bernard. In 1913, he gave us one of the best-known hymns that we've ever sung, uh, The Old Rugged Cross. We've sung that song. We love that song. And boy, it has touched our soul to sing the words of that old song, The Old Rugged Cross. But over two decades after writing that song, he heard this story of this missionary and this old woman in China. And there, after hearing that story, he pinned down these words. Let me read them to you. They told me love's sweetest story. They told me a wonderful name. It thrilled all my soul with its glory. It burned in my heart like a flame. They told me of one who loved me. That in heaven he could not remain. He came down to seek and to save me. Oh, tell me his name again. They say he was born in a manger, that there was no room in the inn, that in his own world he was a stranger, yet loved in it in spite of its sin, yet loved it in spite of its sin. They say that his path led to Calvary and that one day he died there in shame he gave his great life as a ransom. Oh, tell me his name again. They call him the sweet rose of Sharon. 
They call him the lily so fair. They call him the great rock of ages. They call him the bright morning star. He's a prophet, a priest, and redeemer. The king of all kings, he now reigns. He's coming in power and glory. Oh, tell me his name again. Oh, tell me his name again. And sing me that sweet refrain of him who in love came down from above to die on the cross of shame. The story my heart has stirred, the sweetest I've ever heard, it banishes fear, it brings hope and cheer. Oh, tell me his name again. His name is Jesus. He died for you and he died for me. And he'll give you hope. He'll banish fear. And hallelujah. He'll take you to heaven one day. He's going to be. Take me to heaven one day. Hallelujah. Could be today. Do you know him? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the truth of heaven. The home of the saved. And Lord, if there's one tonight that don't know your personal Savior, may this be the hour. May this be the moment they turn from sin. And trust you as their only hope of heaven. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you've done. And what you're going to do in Jesus' wonderful name.